Hello, this is Greg Allison of Galactic Gregs coming to you from a case of rocket engine parts in the waning hours of the 20 teens to talk to you about the 2020s. The 2020s can be a very exciting decade for space exploration and development. What's going to happen? Well, starting in the year 2020, we expect the launch of the SpaceX Crew Dragon. We expect the launch of Boeing's Starliner CST-100 which has been renamed the Clipso, potentially. That's up for consideration. The, uh, these are programs of a commercial crew to the International Space Station. Hopefully they will finally get underway and be successful within this year. Also, we expect uh, the launch of the Solar Orbiter in February of 2020. The Solar Orbiter is a joint program of ESA and the United States to be launched from the Canaveral Air Station. The Mars 2020 rover is expected to launch this year. China's Chang 5 is expected to launch this year, and it's expected this time to do a lunar sample return. That's pretty exciting. The U.S. Air Force is expected to launch their X-37B, built by Boeing. Virgin Galactic is expected this year to do a launch of their first uh, crewed uh, test case for a commercial space tourism flight. I don't know if this will actually be a tourism flight itself, but it's to be a crude flight. I will try to talk to George Whitesides about this directly soon. Maybe I'll have him on this channel because I know George quite well. That said, Virgin Galactic uh, is in competition, of course, with Blue Origin. Blue Origin is expecting to launch their new Shepard this year, both suborbital space tourism rocket flights. So this could be the year in 2020, this space tourism finally get, hits plenty, plenty. <laughs> uh, but cargo is not to be forgotten, for Virgin Orbit is looking to have a cargo flight in 2020. Missions are plenty, we hope. But the whole decade promises to be very interesting and very exciting. The uh, SpaceX Starship program is expecting to fly they're what was going to be their MK3, which now they've dubbed the SN1. We don't know what that means. Maybe serial number one. Uh, you know, we got they got rid of their MK2 after the uh, MK1 uh, fell from the pressure test. So some people say that's not a failure. I'll leave that to you guys to debate that. I did cover that thing going boom. <laughs> Which, if you know Allison's Laws of Rockets, you know that all rockets are subject to go boom. And uh, for those that haven't seen my videos in the past, Allison's Laws of Rockets are rockets go boom. That's the first law. Two, rockets have always gone boom. And three, rockets always will go boom. So our job is to make them go boom, boom less often. Now, having said that, um, that is the, the risk of all these new propulsion programs. What we have to consider is that none are without risk. The Starship program is very ambitious. That is also very exciting, but there's a whole lot of new technology, a whole new set of systems to put into play, and there are risks and rewards from such an approach. I did a video on that. You can see that on my channel. Just click the links. So. The MK3 SN2 is expected to fly in maybe three months. When will the actual Starship fly? You know, we got a super heavy booster, and the Starship is the second uh, stage. Uh, well, Elon is talking about flying somebody around the moon. That artist from Japan, he's talking about flying uh, maybe something in 2022. I don't know. It's all very speculative. Uh, it's, he talks very aggressive schedules. We see hiccups in the schedule already. He tends to be very optimistic. Maybe he'll be right. Maybe he'll be on it. I'm not going to speculate on the schedule yet. I'm going to wait and see how this um, SN1 flight does. And then maybe we can get, start getting a little be better bearing. Hopefully, it will all work out. Uh, if nothing else, that super heavy booster would be a huge game changer in and of by itself. The S, that super heavy booster, uh, which is not, as far as I know, slated to fly in 2020, but sometime in the 2020s, would produce 16 million pounds of thrust. That's almost two times as much as the Saturn V. Holy smoke, yes, it's big, it's powerful. Uh, <laughs> guys in Boca Chica, run. <laughs> so, that said,
the uh, SLS program is expected to fly sometime in 2020. That's uh, according to their program schedule in November for the Artemis 1 mission. The Artemis 1 mission is an uncrewed mission launching a lot of uh, secondary payloads and flying the Ryan capsule on a test flight. Now, contractors are speculating that'll be 2021. That's why I did not include it in the 2020 review. So what will happen with SLS? Uh, will it fly in 2021? Uh, Artemis 2 is expected to fly sometime in the fourth quarter of 2022. Artemis 2 is expected to do a lunar flyby. This is uh, an Apollo 8 mission. Yeah, I just did a video on Apollo 8. This is essentially a Apollo 8 style mission. But the one key difference, they're not actually going to orbit the moon. It's going to be a lunar flyby, a real figure eight, just around the moon and back. So it's because the, uh, the ICPS, the inertial cryogenic, uh, upper stage that they're using for uh, the SLS program uh, doesn't quite have the umph that they want to have in the Block 2 program, or actually Block 1B, when they plan to have the uh, evolved upper stage. That would give them a lot more capability, but so far all four of the Artemis missions are Block 1A. And again, the, 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 interim, uh, the interim cryogenic uh, second stage. ICPS propulsion system, excuse me, interim cryogenic propulsion system. And I've worked at quite a bit myself, but it's been a couple years since I worked on it, the ICPS. That said, the um, Artemis 3 is slated for 2024. That's expected to put two people on the moon for a week, including the first woman to ever land on the moon. If yeah, SpaceX don't lead them there. <laughs> Good luck, SpaceX. Hey, I hope they can. Um, and then the Europa Clippa is slated for Artemis IV mission to be flown in 2025. So Starship, you know, that could be a very aggressive schedule. You know, they're talking about flying each vehicle three times a day. They're talking about building multiple vehicles. I mean, quite a few of them. They're talking 220 pounds to LEO for a cost to SpaceX, about $200,000 in fuel. So we're talking $9 a pound orbit, if they can pull it off. Did a video on that. Yeah, holy smoke, it would be such a radical game changer, it's not gonna be funny. If they pull that off, it will be amazing. Can they do it? Well, as I said before in, in other videos, it depends on a lot of things, but uh, the tenacity of Elon Musk and SpaceX to be willing to break things and try, try, try again, is their key asset. It's the key, that and the fact that they can prototype things, do rapid turnaround, and they're operating out of a small shop where they'll have a lot of interface, uh, interfaces with external organizations. That's what enables them to be such a rapid turnaround uh, development center. It gives them a lot of power to do things that uh, larger organizations just can't pull off. So they have some great capabilities in that. I look forward to what they can come out with, even if for some reason, Starship doesn't work as planned. They're with the super heavy, you know, if, even if it don't work, they're gonna learn so many lessons, they will come up with something entirely new that will still knock our socks off. SpaceX, you know, as long as Elon Musk stays alive, is pretty much uh, a shoe in to knock our socks off. So I wait to see what the 2020s unfold in that category. Then there's the sleeper, Blue Origin. What is Blue Origin gonna do? Oh my gosh. You know, they're, they're the new Shepard's expected to fly. Well, are they going to have the new Glenn? The new Glenn has four payloads already sold, so they need to pick it up and get it out soon. The new Glenn is more of a Falcon 9 class vehicle, a Vulcan class vehicle. I expect Vulcan to fly in the 2020s. Uh, that's a replacement for uh, you know, the Launch Alliance suite of vehicles to include uh, the Atlas vehicles, launch vehicles, and the uh, Delta launch vehicles. So it would definitely improve cost performance, but it would not keep up with the, uh, it might come close to Falcon, you know, uh, heavy, Falcon 9 heavy, but it's not gonna get up to the level of performance of spaceship. So, uh, you know, it could be that everybody's chasing the contrails of SpaceX, including Blue Origin. However, you know, I'm gonna have to have to do a video real soon about the, the merits of, and other people have done this, but I will have a different take on the merits of the approaches of Jeff Bezos versus Elon Musk to include their space settlement plans, the differences in those. And I think that's probably where I'll focus. 
uh, and maybe the business model that's part of it too. So there's a lot to be interested in there. It's good that we have different models being pursued. Uh, the Chinese are, are active. They're going to be launching their Long March 5 and uh, apparently in 2022 to launch a crewed space station. They're planning uh, robotic missions, uh, the Long March 9 and 2030. So right at, after the 2020s, they're going to have a, a Saturn V class vehicle, maybe 10 years after SpaceX has a vehicle that's capable of two times the performance and uh, many orders of magnitude cheaper cost. So China, wow. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting to see how the 2020s roll out. It's, it's a crazy decade coming up. Uh, it's going to be very exciting for space development, for space settlement, for space exploration with a scatter robotic missions, India, China, uh, the United Arab Emirates is planning uh, robotic missions to Mars. Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to be excited about this coming decade with the commercial potentials popping up, with what Virgin Galactic is doing. I am thoroughly excited about the prospects in space for 2030. Now to 2030, that is. So please, and, and beyond. So please, uh, I'm going to do many, many, many videos on such, these topics, including rockets, rocket parts, uh, rocket engines. And I'll probably start with a very basic, what is a rocket kind of a video for uh, the uh, people that aren't that acquainted. So please, uh, and many, many, many other space videos and breaking news, so please do subscribe to my channel, click the update notification bell, and I've got some links below that are more from my sister channel because I really haven't developed uh, products specifically for this channel. Green Greg's is my sister channel, but you can support this channel by checking those uh, links out. If you're interested in those kind of things, uh, please give me the support you can, and we can hopefully get this thing moving forward, get some better video equipment, and you know, maybe you want one day even do some snazzy graphics. You know, I'm not quite up to where some of these other channels are in that regard, but I bring content. I tell you information. I bring information because I am an engineer. I work in the industry. I have decades of experience in the industry uh, working as a full-time job and on the side, and often doing even more on the side than I do in my full-time job. So I live two career lifetimes in this field. So I've got a lot to bring, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Thank you for watching.